age or stage or place in life that you're in, that is the context in which God wants to do a work in your life. And actually, I am quite certain that this present context, all that's going on with the coronavirus and, you know, physical and and social distance and all these things, this is the context by which God wants to do a work of renewal in our lives. One of the most common misconceptions we can make as believers is assuming that our growth is limited to certain circumstances. In reality, our growth as disciples is possible in each and every circumstance that life throws at us. As Pastor Daniel discusses in his message today, there's an unlimited variety of contexts in which the Lord uses to renew us. In his study, you'll learn whether you're single, married, out of work, or otherwise. There's always opportunity for growth and renewal. Now, here's Pastor Daniel in Isaiah chapter 40 as he begins his message, Our Context for Renewal. There's an old saying that I've heard many, many times. If you want to make God laugh, make a bunch of plans. And really the idea of that is is that God oftentimes has his own set of plans. And when God has his own set of plans, no matter how much planning we do, and we should plan God has something else he is getting at. Now, what I think is so beautiful is that I believe that God knew that we would be right here, right now, in the midst of a very unique time. Maybe for the first time in in the most recent history, churches have not been able to meet together. That they've been asking people to to keep not only social distance, but but physical distance from one another to try and stave off the, the spread of this virus that has become the centerpiece of our world right now. Now, what I think is amazing about this is Every year, God has given us as a church here at Crosswoods Community Church a unique vision, a vision that is kind of gives us our marching orders for the year, what we believe God wants to do in and through our church. And and really, we call 2020 this year of renewal. Now, what I think is beautiful is that I believe that the Lord knew absolutely that in the midst of this year of renewal, we would be in a situation where the church can't meet together the way that it normally would. But as I've been seeking the Lord about this, what I realize is that what's going on right now is actually our context for renewal, that everything that God wants to do in all of our lives happens in a context. That's a really powerful thing because I think oftentimes we want God to do certain things and we forget that God does things in context. Let me give you an example. If you're married right now, God uses your marriage as one of the primary contexts in which to disciple you, to make you more like Jesus. If you're single right now, guess what? That is the primary context in which Jesus wants to do a work of discipleship in your life. Maybe if you don't have a job right now, That is the context in which God wants to do a work in your life. Maybe you're retired right now. Well, guess what? That's the context in which God wants to do a work of discipleship in your life. Maybe you're you're wanting to have kids, but you don't have them yet. Guess what? You not being a parent at this time, that's the context in which Jesus wants to disciple you. Maybe you have a ton of kids and you wish that they would just grow up and get out of the house. Well, guess what? That is the context in which Jesus is discipling you. Maybe you're an empty nester right now. Maybe your kids have grown and they're off starting their own families. Well, guess what? That's the context in which Jesus wants to do a work of discipleship. See, no matter what age or stage or place in life that you're in, that is the context in which God wants to do a work in your life. And actually, I am quite certain that this present context, all that's going on with the coronavirus and, you know, physical and and social distance and all these things, this is the context by which God wants to do a work of renewal in our lives. And so I want to explore that with you today. So if you could, to get at this, open up in your Bible to Isaiah chapter 40, 
verse 31. The prophet Isaiah, chapter 40, verse 31. And this has been the driving text for us in this year of renewal. It says this, But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Now, what I love about this text is that this is such a powerful example of an upward, inward, and outward text. Think about that, an upward, inward, and outward text. The idea of upward, inward, and outward is very dear to us as a church family here because we get it from Jesus sharing with us the greatest commandment where he said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. That's the first and great commandment. The second commandment is like it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. That first commandment, Deuteronomy 6, 5, that's upward, that you get to have this relationship with God. And then the second commandment, which comes from Leviticus nineteen eighteen, you shall love your neighbor, that's outward, as yourself, that's inward. See, God invites all of us at all times to live upward, inward, and outward. That at every moment of our lives, God is inviting us to be able to say, listen, you get to have a relationship with me and my love for you changes the way you see yourself inwardly and then you move outward from it. This text right here is an upward, inward, and outward text because notice, but those who wait on the Lord, some of your translations say those who hope in the Lord. That's why we're talking about this unstoppable hope, fail-proof faith for uncertain times. Why? Because upward, for those who wait on the Lord, for those who are hoping in the Lord, I want to encourage all of us, we want to hope in the Lord right now. Upwardly, we're trusting that God has a plan and that God is going to do a great work in the midst of uncertain times. But those who wait on the Lord, it says, now inward, they will renew their strength. That's where we get this idea of renewal from. When we live upward and we're hoping in God and we're waiting upon the Lord, then as we are living upward, then God renews our strength. Now, God renews our strength because God is the all-powerful one. And in our Weakness, God's strength is made perfect. And so God wants to do a work of renewal in our hearts. So that what happens? The upward drives the inward, which what? Drives the outward. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. See, Once we live upward, when we're hoping in the Lord and then God renews our strength, then we get to live outward with a uniqueness. This idea of we get to mount up with wings like eagles. Now, I don't know about you. I've never hand glided, although it sounds pretty awesome, right? But this idea of being able to soar, the eagle in in that context was one of the birds that would get the highest in the heavens, that would be able to see the most unique vantage points. Why? Because when we live upward and then we live inward, then it drives us outward. And then we get to mount up with wings like eagles. And then it says you will run and not grow weary. Now, I don't know about you. I'm not a marathoner in any way. But the idea is that when you run, normally at some point you get tired. But he says, no, but listen, you'll be able to run and you won't grow weary. You're going to have a uniqueness and strength. And then of course, you know, you shall walk and not faint that there will be a resiliency to the people of God. And this has been our driving text for this year. And I actually believe that right now in our current circumstances, I believe that God wants to do a unique work of renewal in all of us. So I want to look today at the context for for renewal, this present moment, and how our year of renewal is going to play into this. And I think there's very, very tangible, street level, rubber meets the road things for all of us in this. Now, Because it's upward, inward, and outward, we have an upward, inward, and outward framework for this year. So to get going here, really what we learn first is that we want to be with Jesus and be renewed. We want to be with Jesus and we want to be renewed. That was our upward reality is that as a church this year, we're going to be with Jesus. Now, don't miss this, that given the recommendations from our leaders, CDC, public health and officials and governments, they're actually inviting us to spend more time alone than we might normally want to. They're inviting us to stay with our families, but not really spend a lot of time with other people. And listen, they actually just mandated that we have more time to spend 
with Jesus. And I don't want you to miss this. It's so easy in times of uncertainty to spend our time refreshing the browser window on the news networks, uh, to listen to every podcast, to make sure you're going on and getting the latest news. And we actually miss the God-given gift to really be able to spend time with Jesus. And I want to encourage each one of you to devote in this unique season more and more time to your personal relationship with Jesus. And listen, you know, we all want uh, intimacy in our relationships, right? And I'm not just talking about, you know, a uh, physical intimacy. Really, intimacy is the deepest of relationships. Now, someone might say, well, well you know, how, how, do you, how does a relationship become more intimate? Well, simply the greatest definition of intimacy is communication over time. The relationships that you have that are the deepest are the ones where there's been the most communication over time. Now, you think about some friendships and relationships, they start and there's so much communication in a short amount of time, right? But the, just the sheer volume of communication, that relationship comes very close very quickly. For others, it's a lot of communications, but over a long period of time. And if you want to grow in your relationship with Jesus, then you need to have communication over time. And I actually believe that our current context is a great gift because we have maybe more time than we ever have because of the shutdown of restaurants and all these things in schools. We have more time than we ever have to spend time with Jesus. And I want to encourage you to really cultivate intimacy in your relationship with Jesus because the renewal that you want, those who wait on the Lord they shall renew their strength. Those who hope in the Lord, then their strength will be renewed. And so your renewal comes from your relationship with Jesus. Your renewal comes from your relationship with Jesus. So I want to encourage you, devote time to prayer every day. Spend time. You think about the most intimate relationships. Those are the people who you can be in a room with. You don't even have to talk with them, but just you just enjoy their presence. You don't even need to have a conversation. When was the last time you just wasted your afternoon hanging out with Jesus? I want to encourage you, start reading your Bible. I mean, as a church, we're doing this Bible reading plan. Just join us. And you can pick it up on the Crossroads mobile app. You can pick it up on our website. There's so many different ways to just read along, spend some time in the Word. When was the last time? You just sat down and journaled. When was the last time you wrote out your, your fears to the Lord and your prayers to the Lord? When was the last time you just spent 10 minutes thanking Jesus for all that he's done in your life, for all the miracles that you've experienced, for all the blessings that you have? Listen, our present context is a gift of renewal because we get to be as deep in a relationship with Jesus as we want to be. God loves you. God is always there for us. God always wants to spend time with us. There's never been a time in your life when you've turned to the Lord and said, Lord, I want to spend time with you. And the Lord's like, yeah, I'm too busy for you. It never happens, right? The Lord's like, listen, I got to catch up on the news. I can't really handle you right now. I got, I got to go mow the lawn. No, no. Every time we turn our hearts to the Lord, he's there. So my friends, I want you to be with Jesus. And I want you to be renewed. And this moment has given us such a gift as everything is slowed down. See, you know what's amazing? When you spend time with Jesus, you get renewed because you learn things about how God sees you. Listen to Zephaniah chapter three, verse 17. This is a beautiful scripture that every time I read it, it really, really blows my mind. It says this, the Lord your God is in your midst. The mighty one will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love, he will rejoice over you with singing. Isn't that beautiful? See, they're saying that God is in our midst. He's the Holy One, the Mighty One who was saved. And then we see our Father God as a, a Father. He will rejoice over you with gladness. I mean, like the, it, you just sense that the Father has got his children close as they're desiring to spend time with him. And God is just rejoicing. He's got such joy in his family. I love it. He will quiet you with his love. So many of us, there's so much turbulence in our culture. So much inside. We're so worried about so many things. And it says that God's love will quiet our hearts. And then maybe the most amazing, he rejoices over you with loud singing. 
I always think about this because I, I always love with my kids, we would sing and make noise and they would dance around. And, and it's not that my singing was, was really good at all. I'm a bass player for a reason. You know what I mean? But, but just to see your, the joy of your kids as you're like slapping your leg and singing them a song and they're dancing and having so much fun. That's the exact picture we have here of who the Lord is. He rejoices over his own kids with loud singing. He loves to rejoice because you're his child. When was the last time it blew your mind that God loves to spend time with you? God loves it. I I think of parents when their kids grow up and and move out of the house, when when they leave the house and they just want to spend time with their their parents, where they they make an effort to come on home and say, I just missed you, right? And in a lot of ways, for many of us, it's been a long time since we came back to our Heavenly Father and said, Father, I missed you. And I think that all that's going on right now, the quarantines, all all of us having to to kind of stay away from one another, you're never alone. You're not isolated. He's with you. He's in your midst. He's the mighty one who wants to save. So listen, I want you to be with Jesus in very special and intentional ways in this season. And when you're with Jesus, you're going to be renewed. Now, from there, the upward, we're going to be with Jesus and we're going to get renewed Then we moved to the inward, and I said that we want to be the church, and we want to work together. We want to be the church, and we want to work together. Now, I realize that in this generation, the idea of church has fallen on some hard times, and mostly because we live in a highly individualistic culture, where where individuals, as individuals, we say, well, it's about me, And, and many people think of their own faith or their own you know, uh, spiritual beliefs, whatever step they are on their spiritual journeys as individualistic. But the Bible always teaches that it's not just about us as individuals. It's about us as individuals as part of something greater called the church. It talks about how we are the body of Christ and we are members individually. So God's design for each one of us is that we find ourselves in part of something bigger. Now, there's an African proverb that people love that if you want to go fast... You got to go alone, right? But if, if, if you want to, to enjoy yourself, if you want to go far, you need to go together. I love that. If you want to, if you just want to go fast, you got to go alone. But if you want to go far, you need to go together. And really what this is saying is that you and I are designed not just to live our individual lives, but God has designed us to be together and to go far together. And even though churches cannot meet right now, you and I, we still need to figure out how we can work together even when our churches can't gather together. I want to remind you what the writer to the Hebrews said. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 and 25. It says, And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Now, this scripture is very powerful for us because, of course, we live in a day and age where we're not allowed presently to assemble together. But just because we cannot meet together in our usual church buildings and meeting spaces does not mean that we should stop doing this. Now, I love the technology that we have in front of us. I know as a church family here at Crossroads, we've been intentional to be in the digital space for for years now, right? But So we are allowing the digital landscape to create proximity where we can assemble together. But that is not all that the church is meant to be. There's other things that God wants to do. Listen to what it says. This is Hebrews chapter 10 still. Let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. So as we're gathering together digitally right now, God wants us to encourage one another and to stir up love and good works. So How can you be encouraging people to stir up love, to stir up good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together? And and then he says that it's unique here. He says, as is the manner of some. Now, a lot of people have been talking recently about how all that's going on right now can literally kill the church. Because there's so many people who are not engaged really in their local churches. Maybe they, they go there and attend, but they're not really 
involved, that they're not serving, they're not living their faith out, they're not being financially generous. And as we've had now weeks upon weeks upon weeks of churches not gathering together, you know, for many, many churches, they're, they're, the finances are falling apart right now. All these things are going on right now. And this is something that's been going on statistically more and more year in and year out for a long time. But here's the thing. I believe that all that's going on right now, we have to learn how not just to go to church, but to be the church 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Listen, we, we shouldn't be generous just because we can go and attend a spiritual function at a church. We should be financially generous because God is the most generous person that we've ever met. Now, I realize we have people joining us, not only from Crossroads, but from many other churches. And I just want to encourage you, no matter what church you're going to right now, will you make sure that you are still financially generous with your local church? Will you reach out? Maybe you've never been financially generous with your local church or, or the different nonprofits that you support. I want to encourage you just to, to be generous in this season. Why? Because we need to be the church and we need to work together. And the greatest tragedy of our generation is the fact that people now see their faith as an individualistic thing rather than a communal thing. God never wired us just to be solo operators. God wired us for community. The very first thing that God said that wasn't good was that Adam was alone and he created a helper comparable to him, Eve. See, we're created for relationship. Why? Because God is relational at the essence of who he is. So even though we can't gather together, we need to keep exhorting one another. And then it, in the writer of the Hebrew says it this way at the end of verse 25, and so much more as you see the day approaching. How powerful is that? He's saying, you need to encourage one another even more as you see the day approaching. And this is talking about the day of Jesus' return. Now, here's what I want to tell you. Here's what I want to tell you. The day of Jesus' return is sooner than it's ever been, Right? Jesus' return is nearer than it's ever been in history. Every next day that happens is the soonest we are to the return of Jesus. So we need to keep encouraging one another. So listen, because we can't gather together churches, I want to encourage you to be the church and work together. I want to encourage you, reach out to the people that you know and that you care about. I want to encourage you to allow God to do what he wants to do in and through each one of our lives. I want to encourage you to take the steps that God has for you. Reach out to the people in your small group. Reach out to the people that you've been serving with in all these different ministries that you found yourself in. Just go on Facebook and look up the people that you used to see at church week in and week out and say, listen, I'm just thinking about you. Why? Because we need to figure out how do we work together so that we can be the church even when the church can't assemble together. Oftentimes we forget that the early church, they weren't even, they didn't even meet in buildings. They met house to house on times of great persecution. They would meet underground. They'd meet in, in caves, protect themselves. That's still going on in different places in the world right now. Jesus is real. Many of us can find ourselves feeling as though our growth and renewal in the Lord is both seasonal and circumstantial. However, as Pastor Daniel taught you at his message today, each and every situation you're in is just as much an opportunity. In his study, you learned the importance of seeing each situation as such and opening your heart and mind to what the Lord might be trying to accomplish in you. Hey everybody, this is Pastor Daniel, and I want to be honest with you for a moment. Life is messy, and the hard reality is, if it isn't messy for you now, it will be, and it probably has been in the past. Did you know that you can still thrive in tough times? It's true, you can, but only through the power of Jesus. That's the purpose behind my book, Honestly. I want you to know how to keep living your best life in Jesus, no matter the circumstances of your life. You can find out more about it and get your own copy at JesusIsRealRadio.com. Establishing relationships with others is a crucial part of our lives, whether we're believers and followers of Christ or not. If we are indeed believers in Christ, the most important relationship we build is with Him. But how do we do that with someone we can't see? In Pastor Daniel's next message, you'll learn all about how you can build a strong deep and intimate relationship with the Lord. Well, that's all the time we have for today's broadcast. On behalf of Pastor Daniel and the entire production team, 
We invite you to join us again for the next edition of Jesus is Real Radio 